My name is Dr. Conor McGinn. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Engineering at Trinity College. As, as a kid, I, I enjoyed uh, kind of Transformer cartoons and a lot of machines kind of got my interest at that stage. And I think from an early age, I knew I wanted to be an engineer. Uh, as I started to study engineering, I learned a little bit more about robotics and I, I kind of saw how robots can combine kind of machines, which I really enjoyed with, with, with AI and machine learning and these kind of things. Um, and I was really excited by the possibilities of, 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 of what might happen if you put these things together. Uh, and I also kind of noticed that robotics can, can, can really help solve some big problems we face in the world. Um, so I guess all of these things together sort of, sort of confirmed it for me that this was, was what I wanted to do with my life. The, co the core mission of our, of our research group is to build technology that can empower people. We, we see a, a responsibility there uh, to be able to use our understanding of science, to be able to create things that can, that can help people and make their lives better. Um, we see robots as a uh, quite unique way of doing that. There's, this is a technology that I don't think we've seen before. You know, with a robot, we, it's physically, you know, like a computer which just kind of sits there, we have to go and approach it and it's, it's somewhat passive. You know, a robot's able to move around, it's able to actually act in the world. Uh, and we're able to co combine you know, or, you know, to take computers and to be able to extend them, combine them with physical machines, uh, to be able to develop new approaches in sensing, to be able to understand the world around it, and then to be able to, you know, take that information and do things that are useful from it. This is a, a, an exciting thing that we've never really seen before. Um, uh, and really what our, what our group is trying to do is to understand, you know, with that power, what should we, what should we use it for? We spend a lot of time, for that reason, working very closely with the, the people we think the technology can help, trying to get them involved in the design process so that what we create reflects you know, the needs that, that they actually have and they feel, uh, as opposed to, unfortunately, quite often what happens is where we come up with some cool science and then we try and figure out how we can apply it. The main project that we've been working on the last number of years is, as you mentioned, Stevie. Uh, Stevie is a, what we call a socially assistive robot. It's a robot that can move around, it's got arms, uh, it's got a head, it's, it's able to interact through social interaction as opposed to using a, a kind of a tablet or a remote control. Um, we think this is, is potentially going to be very useful for many different types of problems. Um, we, you know, it's, it's, because it's somewhat shaped like a person and it has some of the features that, that people have, um, it's very adaptable. Uh, so whether that's you know, being able to, to, to do things physically, that might be to, to go and get an object, um, it might be to, to open a door or control something. These are applications we see happening down the line. Um, but it, maybe in the shorter term, it's, it's able to do things that have more of a social function. So it can remind you to take medication, perhaps. Um, one of the areas we, we, we've seen uh, you know, a huge amount of, of a positive feedback is in its ability to play games and try to keep people entertained. And quite often, uh, the older demographic or that we're, we're, we, we test the technology with, they can be quite lonely and quite bored. Um, so being able to provide that kind of social simulation is something that we think is, has huge potential. It's, it's very difficult to, to, to know when you design a robot if people are going to like it or not. It's, it, when we build robots to do tasks, it's, it's not that difficult. If we want to have a robot, uh, we want to develop a robot that can pick something up, you know, there's lots of maths we can, we can use and there's lots of techniques we can use to figure out exactly you know, what you know, what sort of motors we should use, you know, what sort of materials we should use. These are kind of logical, logical decisions we can make. When it comes to more subjective things, like if people are going to like the robot, if it's going to be fun, how it's going to, you know, how they're going to perceive it, is it going to be threatening, is it, is it going to be something that they uh, trust? These are, are much harder things to design for. And, it, you know, for, for us, the way in which we, we, we try and get past this is by trying to involve the users in the design process. So we run workshops, we run focus groups, we show them some of the things we're working on, we get the feedback on it. And, you know, through, iter through taking an iterative approach over time, you know, what we, what we create, we hope, reflects you know, what, what people want in the, in the technology. Um, like with the, with, the, with the new machine that we've built, it's taken us nearly two years to develop it. It's, we've probably, you know, gotten feedback from, from you know, more than 2,000 people in total, if we were to count. Um, and, you know, all, you know as, as a team, we, we, we work very closely with each other. We're very interdisciplinary. Um, and, you know, ultimately what, what happens is, is that we've managed to develop the, the technical aspects of it. So this new robot is got far more sensors, the computing is there to be able to do really you know, sophisticated things, to be able to you know, um, utilize the state of the art machine learning and AI. 
Uh, at the same time, we feel that the aesthetic of the robot, how how it appears, how it expresses itself, this really addresses the the, the kind of the more subjective aspects of of the applications we're going after. Equally, we think the applications it's doing, uh, we're deploying it to do, uh, addresses needs that are quite are quite underserved by either existing technology or existing resources within retirement communities, which is kind of our key market. Uh, I think you know everyone, everyone who's working on robotics in a university, uh, you know, is, is a dreamer uh, somewhere. So certainly, we, we you know, I, I have a vision of what the future might look like. I think um, in the best case scenario, we'll be able to use robots and AI to solve some some pretty fundamental problems we face. You know, with, with a robot like Stevie, we, we see a, you know a rapidly uh, aging population. We see uh, you know very few people. Um, well, relatively speaking, we see very few people of a working age who are going to be able to look after people who are living longer. Um, and as people get older, their healthcare needs increase. We see this as being a huge healthcare challenge. If we don't do something about it, something I think quite quite. If we don't do something radically different from what we're currently doing, we're we're going to have healthcare systems across the the world just buckle at the at the at the demand. So things like this, are, I think, are really good applications of robots. Other applications where I think robotics is really exciting that I can see radical changes would be in, in areas like where people maybe are, are paralyzed. Uh, we can see exoskeleton technology that's able to maybe help them walk again. This is exciting technology that you know the, the potential of is, 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 is pretty profound. Um, on the other hand, I think that if we're not careful, if, if, if the right sort of steps aren't taken to prevent the misuse of the technology, we see kind of weaponry which can be you know, lethal because of, of this technology. Uh, we can see we can see you know the potential for mass unemployment as a result of you know automation that is, is purely driven by capital means um, and I think that you know, there's a responsibility on, on researchers and also uh, on, on people who, who run companies to make sure that what they're building is a world that they want to see and not just something that makes people money and I think that if, if we don't uh, if we're not realistic about what these things are doing if we're not um, knowledgeable and um, you know, reflecting on what the consequences of actions are, then then that's problematic. So what what I try and do, what I think our team tries to do, uh, is to is to kind of be the change that we want to see, and to, to to focus on the development of the technology that makes a positive difference, while being quite you know vocally against the the and, and proactive in, in in speaking out against the misuse of the technology. It's 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 really exciting at the moment, and it's. Uh, I, I remember uh, when I was kind of starting out in in, in in the area when I was starting out to to learn about AI and to learn about robotics. Um, I, I of course was looking around to see who was doing things here in Dublin, and you know, compared to other places in in Europe and the world, there wasn't much going on. And to see how much things have changed in you know a relatively short period of time, um, you know, people are are saying that you know Dublin is now the AI capital of Europe. It's you know they're comparing it to Silicon Valley in terms of the activity that's. That's going on here in the space. It makes it, you know, an incredibly exciting place to be. Um, you know, it's 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 incredible to be able to to see what has grown to be a very active community. There's, you know, you know multiple times a month now. There's there's meetups and there's events where you can go and network with with people, professionals in the area, with students, with academics who are doing really interesting to work in in in, in the science. Um, and I think that as we kind of project forward over the next couple of years, we see more and more companies. Um, start to, to, to come out and, and, and do interesting things, you know, the opportunity to collaborate will, will, will really start to become apparent. Um, and when you see the, the kind of things that Ireland and Dublin has going for it, we're a very social you know, species, we live very close together, uh, our universities are in close proximity. You know, these are things that I think you know, many bigger countries uh, that you know, might have, at least in theory, um, you know, better universities, better everything, they, they, they struggle to be able to work together. Um, and when you consider, you know, what this kind of future of, of interdisciplinary AI, machine, machine learning, robotics, what this sort of looks like, uh, being able to have, you know, the right people in the right place at the right time is, is a critical ingredient. And it seems to me that, you know, Dublin just might be that place. We spend so much time in, in, in the university here, uh, you know, in, engaged in conversations with each other, with whether it's with students, whether it's with colleagues, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, at conferences with other researchers. We rarely get the opportunity to to engage with the with the, with the, with, the, with, the, with the general public. And uh, what I'm excited about doing at Predict is being able to share some of the research that we're doing here. Uh, not not only that, but being able to to share some of the exciting results that we're 
we're, we're getting from, from you know, deploying these robots in real world environments. Uh, and quite often we see fancy YouTube videos of robots doing, doing you know, interesting things, but rarely do we see them interacting with people, uh, especially you know, people in real environments. Um, and I think that what we hope to show and predict will be some evidence that what we're building works and what we're building has a real impact. Um, and I think that uh, you know, when we get around to, to, to that time, we'll have some results that, that are going to kind of open people's eyes to the technology stuff that maybe they thought was uh, a little bit further down the line is actually maybe a little bit closer to hand. Um, I think we'll be able to, to, to talk and, and demonstrate you know, how, how you know, real use cases of, 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 of social robots um, and be able to show that you know, what we're not doing is, is, is replacing people's jobs. What we're not doing is, as is, is often perceived to be, um, you know, trying to, to, to purely reduce costs. What we're doing is, is we're building a technology that's able to um, extend the capabilities of people. This is a force multiplier. This enables people to do more with less. And I think if, if ever there was a, a need and a, and a time for, for a technology that can do this in the healthcare space, now is it.